Did everyone besides me get the minutes? I mean, I just got them. Okay. Good. Um, other than changing the spelling of Jerry's name, which Microsoft Word <laughs> corrected. <laughs> so not auto corrects. Unless Jeremy, you want to change the spelling of your name, then. Oh, the art. The art is formerly known as. Yes. <laughs> Were there any other um, additions, changes, anything else in the minutes? So I'm leaping right to acceptance of the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. I wrote them so I can't say it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, I will take minutes for tonight. Thank you. Yes. Although it must be my turn. Um, so, because it has impacted all of you in some way, my thesis was handed in about two weeks ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> yay. I hope that I will be able to uh, be a little bit more on top of things than I have been. Next. Congratulations. Congratulations. So exciting. Um, can I just make a request about the minutes that we try to get them out like within the week after? because it will help me mm -hmm. put the agenda together. Okay. I mean, two weeks after, but the longer you wait, the more likely you'll forget. <laughs> yes. Oops. All right, next on the agenda, Jeremy, do you have? So yeah, I, I, I see this here. I, I don't, I apologize, I don't have any new updates um things have been a little crazy at the high school <laughs> um, in, in, the, in the district uh but uh yes, the intention yeah. is to expand the um the survey and offer it to uh more individuals at the school and that probably will coincide with what the uh, what we uh, flesh out for the uh, event in, in the fall can i because i wasn't here last time um can you tell me what questions the survey asked? Yeah, so we actually have the, the first um, survey that we did, so we did slight amendments for the one. I did work um, on the other one we did for Pride, so we tweaked it a little bit, but the survey okay. questions for okay. Northampton, and now that I'm looking at it, I might have tweaked this one, but it was age, gender identity, in which we amended the, the um, uh, to be more inclusive, so we have a lot of uh, different options there. Sexual orientation, uh, race, um, and then we asked on a sliding scale of one being strongly disagree and ten being strongly agree. And I can, uh, if you don't have access, I can set, share this with you right now. Okay. Um, I believe that human rights are taken seriously in Northampton. Um, have you ever experienced any type of discri discrimination, harassment, or bullying? And in what ways have you? personally experienced or per personally witnessed um, uh, human rights being disrespected. So that was the, that was ultimately what we kind of parsed down to and um, and went to the, uh, with Neural to the uh, Pride Parade with okay. as well. Great. Did the, this question, what would you, no, this, and you also asked, what would you like to ask the panel regarding social justice issues? That yeah, that, that was also on there because we were we, we did coincide with that social justice okay. week, and they did and they, they did bring questions from there. And how many students did it? Uh, the survey was there were sixty six responses over, I think four classes mm -hmm. in in different departments as well. Um, I think that uh, you know with the with the right um, kind of advertising and things at the school for the fall we can probably uh, just looking at you know in pragmatic terms we probably double that uh, for the responses in the fall um, it also last time we had we also had the um, discussion about 
now that we have a couple of new questions and we've uh, added in, I think we added sexual orientation for pride and a lot of different options for uh, gender identity that were previously listed as uh, other, um, what we do with that data. And so I'm kind of archiving this data for now and then in, in September when we go, when we do this again, we'll have a rep, an exact replica of this and so data will be more in line with, with the direction that we took it for prior. Okay. And is the idea to combine all the places we do the survey? So, like a so yeah, so for, for this one, I, I believe that this one's now brought, broader. The, the, intention, the original intention was to have something that we could use across the board and then for the experience of the students, that, that additional uh, what question for the panel was, was mm -hmm. tacked on. But essentially, you can use the data in the exact same rendition for, for every, every place that we go on our tour. Well, that's good. That solves the problem that we had of like too few people coming to a listening session. It gives us more people. Yeah. So um, I think that the just going on to number six as well, the Pride Server results and experience yeah. that was done on paper. So I don't have access to the to those results. Um, so I don't have access to the results of that, but we, we um, I can certainly get on the um, the point of digitizing that. I'll, I'll volunteer to kind of digitize that data as well. What was your um, impression of the of the event? Did a lot of people? So I wasn't actually. So I helped with the design the of the the survey, but I wasn't actually. I was at the FTA Global Conference. So, oh. um, so yeah, I, d I don't. I don't have that. Noral sent an email though. Were you there, Vivian? Um, I was. I was not there. See, Rachel and Megan are coming, and I have to update one of them is there. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I had also planned to get questionnaires at the parade, but we ended up we missed each other. Oh, um, yeah. Just listening and learning. I'm okay. not here to harangue about anything. <laughs> okay, well, great. Welcome. Um, Thank you. If, if, uh, there is a section in our meeting at the beginning of each meeting for public comment. Yes. Wanted to I, I, you thank you for the offer. Okay. And there's an agenda there if you want to look. Yeah, I, I look at it online. Oh. I decided it was an interesting agenda, but I didn't print it out. So, so just to give you a little bit of context, Last year at our uh, Human Rights Day, uh, International Human Rights Day celebration in December, we, uh, we held a series of talking circles, one in each ward in Northampton, uh, to, to bring us out into the community instead of inviting the community into us. Um, and this year we've decided that we're going to expand those circles and we're, that's the bulk of our work this evening is planning for this next nine or ten months of work. Good work. So Rachel or Megan, um, who would like to tell us about your Pride experience? Sure. Um, we didn't have a lot of time to organize this. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Jeremy, for coming up with a survey for us. Um, it was a two-page form here. Um, the questions are, can you pass around one of them? I'm sure they're yeah, really anonymous. Um, let's go. Okay. So just asked uh, for their 
their age, um, gender identity, sexual orientation, race, um, and to um, mark on a scale of 1 to 10 um, whether they believe, um, how seriously they believe student rights are taken in the Northampton community. And there were two other questions. Um, have they experienced any kind of discrimination or harassment or bullying? And, and then the narrative part in what ways they have experienced or personally witnessed human rights and what is respected. Um, so I, we, um, there, were, there were only three of us, and I think over 15,000 attended or something. I don't quote beyond that, but um, it was a pretty sizable crowd. Um, and we just, you know, I just chose to randomly every six person or so. Um, and people were very, um, they're very open to taking this questionnaire. And, um, I was asked a few times like what the purpose of this was and I said this is just kind of a kind of a pilot survey that we're doing and it would be fine throughout the year. Um, I, I don't know if Rachel what was your what was your experience? Well I'm glad we did it because it was heartening to see that people really wanted to share their experience and of course it's under the backdrop of a a parade and so in a way that might be the most welcoming day in Northampton <laughs> but we still got some you know people who are pretty frank and we um, so I, I guess I'm heartened for moving forward that we'll, we'll be able to get people to, to you know to, to answer us um, because I wasn't clear I wasn't sure about that before because it's kind of personal and you're asking demographic information but it may be just a context so um, it did start raining but you know I got like 30 um, I'm not sure, Nural had, she, she was really uh, ambitious, she probably got, and she had a little team with her, so she might have gotten farther. We didn't have one place, we uh, just, we, I didn't even see Nural that day, we just, uh, uh -huh. we were more proactively circulating. Um, yeah. So I, it was a good experience, and it was an interesting experience. Did, did people find the questionnaire okay to work with, or how did yes, that go? Mostly we just asked them to go out on their own, I mean, it's like check boxes, mostly. Um, I think, yeah, the, the, so the, um, the response is, you know, skewed, quite positive. Question five, whether or not we were going to take seriously, we were at the front of the parade. Um, yeah, I think there were, some you know questions thing I have them as well like what so what are the implications of what what are the applications of this what what do we intend to do with this data and um, I feel like certainly there's um, you know we should visit that more in the future if we if this was like a longer format um, this in combination with the listening circles be helpful. It was a good um, amount for what we were doing. What was nice about the about the survey was it was really it, it didn't, I didn't feel like we were keeping them too long in the middle of an event or think just right. Someone did mention that I just passed around, so I don't have it in front of me. But one question about true or false um, Northampton um, human rights are respected in Northampton or something. Oh, the scale of one. Yeah, scale of one. And, and someone said, "Well, I can't answer for everyone." They, they didn't. I kind of I kind of like the question because it's an overall feeling. But a, a, one person just said, "Oh, I can't, you know, I can't answer for everyone." So that's the only feedback I got about the question. Was there? Um, oh, I, um, I want to say I I did like that it was just front and back, and I did wish that there were more questions, maybe just about the context of where they may have experienced discrimination, harassment, and bullying. Um, because, you know, if we were to uncover that a lot of this happened in public places, that would be useful information for us. Um, and perhaps maybe separating out the, the question six, uh, any type of discrimination, harassment, or bullying, that's um, kind of double or triple narrowing that the, the question. Because they, I feel like they're, they're asking for different things. This is, Discrimination, harassment, and bullying. It's, it's difficult to answer that. Um, 
how speech should be separate questions. Um, so, but I think in general, people were really pleased to see the number of options offered here in the gender identity here. And as um, uh, you might expect, there was a, a broad range of responses. Oh, so, that's, 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 yeah. that's, um, that's good. Okay. This was from, this was actually, um, I contacted my a friend in um, Santa Cruz, California, that one of my clients and actually a good friend now. Um, who does a lot of LGBTQ plus stuff. So I got that. He directed me to some of the language here. So that was, that was good. That's good. That's good feedback. Um, do we want to take a moment to, to create um, some of those, um, so like amend the survey to some of the suggestions here? Um, because moving forward, we should have kind of, um, so we have now two renditions of the survey and to add the um, for, so now we've kind of defined for a second time. So I think that we're heading in the right direction. So um, the first one would be an amendment to have you experienced any type of discrimination, harassment, or bullying in Northampton. Would we want to um, eliminate language in that, separate those out into specific, in, into specific um, questions, like three different questions and this with, with the same answers? Mm. Is it possible to have it be the same question but have different categories, discrimination, harassment, bullying, like, and and then, you know what I mean? I think that's what you're saying, like racial discrimination, racial harassment, racial bullying, sexual orientation, harassment. The old, the, um, I, I that think that makes sense. I'm not thinking that maybe discrimination like that. Context, like in you know, in your workplace, in public spaces. Or, you know, oh, you want a more specific? Yeah, perhaps we could do it that way. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. an if so, where where has this happened? Yes. Okay. So, so I think part of the way we got to this framing was the high school students sort of said they hadn't experienced much of anything, or it sort of you know, sounded more theoretical to them, which I thought was a surprise. Um, and I think that's why we ended up in this wording, because um, we were sort of surprised that their, their description of experience, or lack of experience. Um, maybe this is going to turn into, we would like to have more precise data but it gets harder and harder to I mean, I, I wanted to find out, could we get a copy of these and like have them at coffee hour after mm -hmm. a service and stuff? Just to, it would be easy to sort of get more experience with how does this work and how quickly does it work? Um, and, and we could certainly experiment with having a more precise questionnaire and see what happens when we hand it to people. Is there value in having people say whether it's discrimination, harassment, or bullying? You mean separating it out? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I feel like if so, we also have to provide some basic some definitions that um, would be considered discrimination versus harassment. So I think leaving it vague lets people define it for themselves. Right. That's true. I think the underlying context of that is have you. Has anything bad happened to you? Yeah. And I like the idea, and I, we did talk about it and discuss it last time, we just didn't um, fully sculpt out the um, the specific places. But, I, so if you have experienced any type of discrimination, or harassment, or bullying, where did this occur? And so um, we, we talked briefly about that, but we never kind of reached a consensus on any of the, the areas that we wanted to kind of target. Um, do you have any suggestions for those? Well, for the wording? So, um, for the wording for, for location. So well, I think it shouldn't be just where. I think it should be describe the context. I think that, that. Yeah. In what ways, if any, have you personally experienced, personally witnessed human rights being disrespected? I think we covered that in that one. Unless you want to change the wording of that one, too. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 
I think the original intent was, I mean, the, the nice thing about the having the areas in the oh, check box is that you can easily, you don't have, you can take that data and easily give them options of it. Um, we, I, I, in, in this, we were hoping to get some of the context from that, from the paragraph, mm -hmm. the long answer text, right. but without the long answer text, it kind of gets lost in that right. translation. Um, but private business. Yeah, I think the distinction between public space and private space is important. Although I think sometimes that might be a little hard to decide. What sure. is a school? Public space. It's a public building. I'm, I'm thinking of public spaces um, are places where we may have some policy recommendations that the city could implement. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a private restaurant, we don't have that. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I think a, re a restaurant, it, a, a restaurant cannot well, public discriminate. accommodation slots. Yeah. yeah. So. And what does the restaurant count as? It's public. It is. It is public. Mm. But I can see if I was 15, I might wonder which it was. Mm. Actually, I'm wondering. Mm. And how old you? So, when you <laughs> think of these, do we want to? Do we even want to get down to the specifics of, you know, restaurant, bar, park? It's just the matter of what we want to quant um, categorize each thing as. Yeah, because business is a little vague. I mean, if, if the problem is bars and restaurants, but not, you know, retail, that might be interesting information. Mm -hmm. And the most uh, specific information actually you have on your survey is about disability and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the person who went into most detail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so we could have some, like, for example, as far as restaurants, um, the library ever, but also have given the space to provide more detail okay. for other. to decide how much, how long you're going to make this. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it a kind of survey like this, which is pretty quick? We had, I feel like we had just five seconds mm -hmm. <laughs> with each individual. Um, we have a lot of distractions. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so this was probably the, the right wing suggestion. Number four, your race. Perhaps change it Hispanic to a T. So it sounds like the option could be to make seven a two-part question, but then we want to, you know, what ways and where kind of thing, or or just keep it how it is. Um, I do like the brevity for the purpose of getting uh, people. Um, I think that that's that's fine. I mean, the the biggest thing was getting it down to two pages. Yeah. Like getting it down to a single page because every there's so many people. Um, it's just kind of sussing out the um, these areas. So rest, right now I have restaurants, and bars, public building, and then parentheses library, school, etc. Public park or recreation area, and I just don't know where to kind of go after this. Yeah. Um, There's on the street kind of street. Yeah, we heard a few people say things like they got to look on the street, which is a hard thing to address. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's good to know. But it, Street so, and public walk. Well, can I just make a suggestion? So, it seems to me six and seven are different. Like, I don't, I don't think that I don't read this as number seven prompting someone to give you more specifics about what they checked in number six, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, what if we just said in number six, you know, you ask the question the way it is, and then you say, please describe. Mm 
and then people will either give because I feel like if we put too many categories of locations we're going to miss something and I don't know how meaningful it would be but what would be meaningful is hearing what people have to say about what happened so we could just say please describe briefly then I think number seven is a different question Okay, so I don't know what other people think about that. I, I guess, yeah, we're going to modify it for each of our um, circles. Um, well, two and three stay the same no matter what the circle, you know, that takes up a page. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have an opinion, I just I forgot we decided we we're going to kind of tweak them for each. Um, Circle that we, we reach out to. Um, In other words, these have you know go go into descriptions about uh, sexual orientation. If we're talking to a different audience, are we going to modify that? Or are we going to keep the demographics the same? Well, I th I really think sexual orientation and gender identity right. should be in everyone because right. that could be where somebody experiences yeah. discrimination. Right. I, yeah. I also I think just from the point of view of logistics. We can't really. I don't think we should be tweaking for each one. And then yeah. we're not going to have data to compare with data. Yeah. I mean, like with like. Right. So, right. I mean, that's and just my thought. Apples and oranges. Yeah. But this is so different from the ones we've done before. So we've yeah. I would just. I would. I would want a consequence consensus here, mm -hmm. and then cement that. Yeah. Whatever. Right. Whatever we come. So then, even the slight change of a of a wording of a question is going to give you it can can skew your data, mm -hmm. um, and that's not to to say that you know we can't look at things. I mean, I think we have a lot of data um, from a lot of different sources, and that's and that's great for our listening tour. When we when we really launch that, we want to kind of have a unified yeah. uh, response, and we can come back to this too. We don't need to figure it all out right now. Um, I do have another suggestion. Um, yeah. I feel like I'd like to capture more demographic data. Like, uh, could we ask the question about perhaps like what language is primarily spoken in the home? Because I think that's a question that will that's kind of a proxy for what uh, whether or not these people may what their citizenship status may be, whether they you know. I think the um, another thing you could ask um, is um, maybe level of education, because I think that's also a proxy for uh, household income. A lot of surveys. Would that be would that be interesting to know? I'm just, I just suspect that you know, right, you know, people who don't have a, you know, a strong grasp of English who may be you know, new immigrants or um, a certain state in some ways may experience more discrimination mm -hmm. right. in general. And I don't think there's a really, it would be, it would be interesting to, to know that in addition to, to their base. Yeah, I agree. So could we put it, um, again, I, I, don't, I think if we could try and keep it concise, so what I think, language spoken in the home is great. Right, because if we're not going to tweak it, it has to be viable in, at, with each circle and really capture right, sure. it. And well, so yes, I'm just going to be adding that. That's mm -hmm. not Will we have primary language, language spoken or language languages spoken? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And do we give um, possible languages, or do we, which we have done here, sort of boxes to tick, or do we just let people write? Sure, all right. People should just write. Yeah, it could be. Oh, yeah. Among them. Yeah. Just like, more than we can. Would it be interesting to know ages to be able to track generational differences? <laughs> 
Yeah, each is on the, yeah, the first question. Yeah. Oh, I missed. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Thank you. Okay. And in regards to the, so we do we want education and household income, or is it household income to much? It's used or? as a proxy for household income. Okay. Generally, yeah. In some ways, education is more of an important marker because um, that's why I find in public health. Mm -hmm. Someone can be lower income, but like for example, if um, the education of girls and women in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. the, the the health of the family goes up whether their income is budget at all actually so it's an interesting mm -hmm. idea about how perceptions mm -hmm. I guess it does measure different things but um, yeah I, I think that the um, that the education level is, is less off-putting than money it might be people have such a hard time just talking about that it's true yeah. and so we, we start at um, highest level of edu highest level of education um, no and then just let them answer it. And then, so don't have. Okay. Don't have categories. I don't think. I, I probably would say to have categories only because if we, if we start getting hundreds of these, it's going to be, we're going to have to manually do that. And then we'll have to try to suss, we'll, we'll have to try to like extract which one we think if they give a big answer. Okay. Um, but there might be, we might be able to find what surveys, okay. how they put that. Same kind of language as them. Yeah. Have like three or four. And, um, we got, and we can always have other. It just makes the process okay. easier. Yeah, yeah, got it. Are, are we trying to keep it to this sort of length? I don't think so. Yeah. I think that this was specific because we Just knew that there was a lot of people. Yeah. And um, yeah. And we will have an online version. So, all right. Again, you, you, I think you have to be careful you don't put people off by being too long. Oh, this is too long for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, not going to do it. <coughs> this was just right, actually. We could treat the questions, but I felt like after that they would have started. Well, there were really fantastic things going on in the background, so <laughs> big dances, and so. But I felt like people did not resent this amount, at least. Um, I wonder just about adding one thing to the end, which would be: Is there anything else you want us to know? Um, it just invites someone to say something that didn't get specifically asked. It makes the data collection a little harder, but so it already is complicated by number seven. But it may give us direction for the next version of the question. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a good question. There's sort of open. Yeah. Question. I think in, in an earlier meeting we talked about asking people's um, city or town of residence, please, because some people will be visitors and some will live here. Is this still something we want to track? I guess I'm thinking not because the survey is asking them about their experiences in Northampton, right? So does it really matter if the person lives there or not lives there? It's really about everybody's experience, no matter where they live. And then if because then it sort of like invites the question of are they describing something that happened to them in their hometown if they're not from Northampton? Mm -hmm. Seems to muddy it a little bit. Those are my biases about getting overwhelmed by things. 
but one page that you can sort of see, okay, one, I, can, I can see that, I can easily do that, take me five minutes, three minutes, whatever. If we took the under question two and question three and put the things side by side, you cut the space taken up on the page in half. Yeah, if, if we go back to a paper, I'm, I'm, ideally people would fill this out because now we'll have to take these and then manually transfer them to the yeah, computer, yeah. so we want as many people doing the electronic version as possible. Um, and so, yeah, but it, for, we, can we can definitely make it, um, we can, I can take that in Photoshop. I mean, just this idea that it's, it's manageable, it's not going to go on forever and ever. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be good if it was a paper to keep it to two pages back, one back, one page, two sided, if possible. And if you did that, you probably could. Yeah, but even online, to see it, you want to know how many pages the thing, how much this is going to demand of you mm -hmm. in your sort of. I think one of these editions were probably at around ten-ish questions. Am I counting right? Yes. So yeah. Which is so we can say the survey. Yeah. This is end by question. Yeah. We're currently at nine. Okay. Place where I work just is in the midst of a engagement survey with all of the employees. Um, and they've already had to put out notices about why they asked about sexuality um, at the beginning of the question. What I noticed is that they did not ask ethnicity on um, this part of the question. So, and also there's a lot going on around um, workplace harassment. So it's not all that dissimilar. Mm -hmm. But it's a Meg, I think that's really uh, astute about the language as well because of the, we went to the unlocking opportunity um, housing um, report back and one of, the, one of the barriers identified was language barriers. And it is a form of discrimination if you cannot fill out the forms to, to apply for aid and affordable housing. So that would be really interesting, good to know. So we're going to have to have a place yet where we want to do this questionnaire in Spanish. Perhaps they need translations. Yes. Yes. yes, we did talk about that in an earlier meeting. Um, I can't remember. Is this the International Language Institute, maybe? But, yeah. But we'll, yeah, we, we help doing the online survey. And we'll make it just oh, yeah, it sounds, sounds really cool. Um, I think so. I think, um, well, for, sorry, not for the pride survey, but for the kind of amendments to this, mm -hmm. and then we can kind of look at them and finalize them next, next time. Mm -hmm. Just a little work to do on the language, language is spoken. Fun fact, Tagalog, Filipino, is the third um, most spoken language in the United States. Mm -hmm. oh. Didn't know that. I wouldn't have thought in Northampton, would you? For, for North, so this was just the United States, because yeah. I was trying to find like yeah, the yeah. top 10 mm -hmm. within there before the other, but. If anyone wants blank uh, copies, we made a lot, so for any reason you want it. Okay. Oh, I would like one for sure. Yeah, just one. Okay, thanks. You're always very ambitious. Yeah, yeah. She would say yeah. She yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it hadn't stopped, for, it started earlier, we probably would have more time. Spanish 40.5 40, 40. million, Chinese the next 3.4. I wonder if, you know, I think I, I, I get that we want to have 
most people do this online, but some people don't feel comfortable online. And I wonder if we want to have some copies in the libraries so that people can do it that way and put a notice in the paper about it. Or can you put them into the page in the news page? Well, that would cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, how do you reach? I, I agree there are a lot of people who don't want to do anything. Um, they will question their own mind. But and it also chooses people. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And libraries are just kind of community yeah. centers. Yeah. yeah. And communities. And that is where we had the um, pledge. Um, so I think we're leaning into strategies. Oh, sorry. I want to and just we're, we're good on the survey for now. Mm -hmm. Are you putting data as we in live time in real time? Okay. We're <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Great. That is good. All yes. right. Um, Megan and Rachel, were you able to reach out to any of the community partners? I briefly touched be uh, base with Rose, and I would be need to. And she told me to call her back and play phone tag. She seemed interested, but I really want to nail down a specific uh, event in which maybe we could uh, piggyback. Wasn't that that was the idea, correct? So I didn't nail down the event, but I did expose okay. her to the idea. So I need to follow up with her. Actually, okay. So I will follow up. With Rose. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, one thing. Could be, or would this be an appropriate time for me to say something about that? Mm -hmm. Like asking, like asking them to share with their network the link to the survey. Oh, that's true. I, I didn't ask her about that. I was, I asked her about an event in which we could kind of make a spiel and pass it out, but I didn't have that. Yeah, because they got a big network, sure. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's possible it's people that would really have experiences that we want to hear about. Right. Um, in terms of gender and, and other issues too, the Women's March, the local Women's March, uh, I had a big network that I would be willing to send it along to. I hadn't thought about that. That's a great idea. That would be great. Okay. So I spoke to Morgan Sweet to Lori Milden, but I left a voicemail for her and she emailed me back. Um, she's uh, the director at Center for New Americans. Um, so uh, she said um, her, they have language classes uh, which are winding down for the year. Mm -hmm. um, so that may not be appropriate. Uh, it may not be appropriate to, to arrange a sort of a listening session um, uh, at this time. But um, she said it would be helpful if we could we could have a short discussion about what types of uh, issues our commission wants to address, and so we can figure out how to best elicit comments and responses from the students. Um, they do teach civics classes, which would be um, you know, interesting issue things that are input would be a valuable part of their lessons. So, um, do you think that we could do a circle there in the fall? Yeah, I'm assuming if it's on the yeah, the school calendar. It sounds like most of the students would be available then. But I think she wants to have an interim discussion before mm -hmm. we plan that. So um, I'm happy to continue talking to her. But I would like to know as well, just being a new member, like what you know, to have a little bit more information about our history and what, what are the issues that we are kind of highlighting. Um, so I want to look at our <laughs> our descriptive literature. Yes, the um the charge of the, uh, the mission, the human mission is on the, we put it on the agenda. Did you think we have a brochure or a palm card or something that we've we used in the past? We did have one last year for, um, was it for the listening circles? Or no, it was for the pledge, for the pledge. Yes, we did have a palm card for the pledge. So we can, yeah, we can certainly create. Um, a brochure or 
at least something to hand out that has this information on it. So this is taken right from our city charter. Um, so it's it's in you know legislative language, and we can we can adapt this to be a little bit more friendly or conversational. But that can you say more of what your question is? Um, what, what, the question from Laura Millman or the one yeah. that I have for the, yeah. the commission? Yes. Okay. Hey, um, I just, um, I would just like to have more background and perhaps something to, <laughs> I, I would just like to represent the commission. See, I, I'm, I'm asking you to draw it out because I actually also have a hard time because I think it sort of it sounds like that happened to both of you while you're handing out the questions. What are you going to do with this? Mm -hmm. and, and frankly, that was the most difficult question at the listening circle mm -hmm. I was in when somebody said, can you sort of tell me what your business plan is, what you're going to do with the information that you're hearing from us? And <clears throat> I didn't have an answer. I think we're, but I think what we're trying to do is if we found themes of here are problems going on, this um, handicap access, disability access. Um, could we then format that in some way to say, here are the things we, we've been doing this listening. And, coming back to the city council and the mayor and saying, here are the things we're hearing. And actually, what we also heard from Melissa Klein is, that's actually not helpful. Here are the themes we've heard, and here's some proposals we have for what might be done to improve things. Um, am, I say, am I saying something? Yeah. yeah. Right. Could, could you clarify a book? What, what wasn't helpful just saying that? We can't. It's not helpful to just, the city council is not a body that uh, problem right. solves. It's a, they prefer to be given proposals for solutions uh -huh. that they can gotcha. vote on. Um, so putting on their lap, there's issues. People are concerned about disability access. And that doesn't go anywhere. Um, but we would then have to do a second. And we have proposals for what, as a non-legislative body, what could we recommend to education, organizing other committees to sort of meet with it. Yeah. Or collaborate with the city council. Like if we, if it came to be that it seemed like people can't get around in wheelchairs in the winter, okay, public safety committee, maybe you should think about having the sidewalks plaque instead of leaving it up to the homeowner. So, but anyway, I'm, I'm saying this from a, what's our, what are we going to do with this information that we're collecting and where do we go with it? Which is why the questions always say, what have you seen in Northampton as opposed to what did you experience in Hadley? So let me take a, a step back. Um, we didn't do a very good job of onboarding you all. Um, so sorry. <laughs> this is obviously a place we need to work on. And Jeremy, we didn't onboard you very uh, thoroughly either. Um, Lori, I think you're the longest serving. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I wasn't on board either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be our next year's project. Um, Although I think we have a full complement now, so we yeah. don't have to onboard any new people. I think what was very helpful, do you remember when we wrote out all the kind of goals and things? Yes. yes. I mean, I felt that it happened sure. more then yes. than it did right. in the so, so the when the, when the commission was first started, uh, in the 1990s, they did have some uh, part of their role was to hear complaints, um, and that changed because really they don't they 
there's no authority that rests with the commission. So what they could do is listen to people, um, take information, but there was no enforcement or you know, any resolution that they could make happen. So it shifted to, um, you know, we can convene conversations, we can uh, sponsor education, we can work with the city council and the mayor's office. Um, those are the, the sort of things that are now in our purview. Um, there was a period of time where there was some, you know, in all organizations, there's there's forming, norming, storming, and you know, so there was some stormy time. And um, when I took over as chair, I was still pretty new on the commission, so that was one of the first things I did. Was as Davina said, I had our our um, mission up there and the what strategies that we can use to enact the mission. So what is our work to do? Trying to really get clear about what our work is to do. Uh, one of the things that's been pretty consistent is for the Human Rights Commission to have some kind of International Human Rights Day commemoration. Uh, so we did, I'm trying, was I two, do we have two of them? Did I, was I two of them? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so we had stand, we had a, a thing on city hall steps where people would just stand out and you know a handful of people came thank goodness some of us have spouses because <laughs> otherwise there would not have been very many people there um but we did have uh, a representative from smith college there and from cooley dickinson hospital all speaking to the importance of human rights in the city and a bunch of city councilors and city councilors yeah so that we developed um a civility pledge this was also in the year following the presidential election and we've been hearing anecdotally there was a rise in you know so street harassment basically so we decided to um, support a civility pledge we asked people to sign it at that commemoration then we also sent it out to schools some classrooms participated there were posters in city hall and in the libraries so people we had over 500 people sign onto the civility pledge pride yeah yeah and um, so the next year we decided to do listening circles for International Human Rights Day. So instead of inviting people to come to City Hall on a Sunday afternoon or whatever day of the week um, to commemorate Human Rights Day, we would go out to the city, to the community, to the neighborhoods. Um, so here's where we get to what is our why? Why are we doing this? Uh, raising our profile in the city because a lot of people don't know that we have a human rights commission uh, to help us uh, hear from stakeholders what they think are our human rights priorities in our Hampton. We hope to use the information we gather by the end of this year to shape our work for the next few years. So this is sort of a strategy that's going to um, shape our direction. Uh, to identify if there are uh, public policy uh, proposals we could bring to the mayor and city council and also to identify whether there are community learning opportunities that we could uh, sponsor. One of them we thought about was um, ice standard training. Mm -hmm. So we may find out in the process of getting information that that's something we'd be interested in. We may find out that people's interests are in a different direction. So. Exactly. So we're going to be using this information to get to give ourselves as human rights commissioners in Northampton a better sense of what is on the minds of the people in different communities in Northampton, and we'll use it to help shape our work uh, over the next couple of years, and also to advise the mayor and city council on issues that might come up before them. Is that clear? I said something. I had. A that you guys are doing mm -hmm. with us about the survey, the, the tenant of the survey, which is that we you know, will be collecting as much as we can, looking for any sort of significant trends that we can translate into policy proposals because we're an advisory body for the city council. Um, we will seem satisfied with that mm -hmm. <laughs> within like our five second interaction. Mm -hmm. right. but, I mean, right. beyond that, you know, this is very useful to know mm -hmm. for our history. 
I think we'll also compile a report at the end that we can make public. Because I think, I mean, I'm already fascinated by the data we've got at the high school, so I think, I think people will be interested. I just wanted to add to that, um, and I don't know if people know this, um, in the whole of Massachusetts, there are quite a lot of other human rights commissions. And there was some kind of conference last fall, is what I remember, and Nural went there. But that was very interesting to hear what other people are doing. And um, there's one thing, I think something that's been complicated for us is we have no funds at all. So, you know, to try and, although the mayor's office does let us do some sort of printing and things, anything remotely ambitious is sort of, has been stymied, mm -hmm. but recently, look, so we have, I can have a revolt if I can start to do Yes, this. we're going to get, we will have a gift account. The mayor and the finance director are figuring out what the seed money is that they're going to put in there. I requested a thousand dollars, and we can start fundraising. If we, if we have, you know, if, we, if, there, if we want to do bystander training, we can start fundraising. Right? Yeah. So another thing we did, or was when the Catholic Charities was talking about bringing refugees here, mm -hmm. they had a series of house party type things to uh, talk to the community because they were trying to decide if Northampton would be a good place to bring them because they didn't want to just do it without like serious investment from the community. So the Human Rights Commission had one of those house parties, uh, sponsored one of those. And we did that and we got a good turnout for that and somebody also sent in a donation. We didn't really know what to do with it. So that was one thing. But I was wondering if the when you did the thing on the board with the um, strategies and all mm -hmm. that, is that in a document somewhere or is that in yes. some minutes that maybe yes. we could resend out? Yes. yes. Okay. That might be good. The mayor did mention us at the unlocking uh, opportunity he, he, he stated his intention to bring some of that information about housing barriers back to the Human Rights Commission. <laughs> My ears uh, perked up, so well, uh, that will be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I do think naming, there's power in naming, mm -hmm. naming the problem, even, you know, uh, and that's a good place to start, but I, I agree that it's together at the Pride March. So, you know, that we can, great, great idea. yeah. Oh, and we have t-shirts. I know, I need to get you t-shirts. We made little badges. Okay. All right, so it's now, we've got about 20 minutes left. Um, so, the work of continuing to develop strategies for these listening circles. Slash surveys. Right. Slash surveys, yeah. right? Yeah. A clarifying question. What, I, we came up with a name. Yes. Oh. I'm so glad you Is heard. it there? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I knew I liked it. I like it. It's really okay. great. It's, uh, yeah, it's great. I couldn't remember if we used both or if we just were. Yeah. What you mean? You were thinking it was one or the other? I thought it was your coming be your voice, but I saw you had both in the middle. So yeah. Because I like hot green shoes, and I think they balance each other. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just wonder if we want to consider having uh, that translated. Mm -hmm. Yep. Into Latin. <laughs> well, I'm guessing that this maybe the second most spoken language in Northampton would be Spanish. People think that's true. Okay. Um, so we. Um, 
in the time that we have left, I I, I think it would be helpful to see if we can sketch a timeline for the project. Yeah. Um, and then know. we can start filling down the details. Um, I know we have some things we've already Is there a place where documents are living and they're not uh, like these extra I mean I'm uh, happy to hold on to them if we had it common. We don't. Yeah. A lot of mobile offices going yeah. on in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> so your living room or mine. <laughs> All right. Um, so, is this is this detailed enough to break it into seasons, the coming seasons? I know summer is really hard to get things done, um, but I feel like we need to try and move some things forward in the summer. Yes, we definitely do. Yeah. So, do we meet every month? Pardon? Do we meet every month? It will depend on people's vacation schedules. Actually, I should get. Do you all know? But we have met yeah. every month. We have, yeah. yes. And there was a period of time when we took December off, but we stuck doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, we meet once a month, it's 12 times in a year, yeah. mm -hmm. many times. So we need to um, get the online survey set up. In the summer. We have identified fall for the high school follow-up. Yeah. I'm just putting things in that I remember, so anybody remembers things. I think the last meeting we said senior center, did we say summer for that? Mm -hmm. My tainted memory is we wanted to see what happened with the high school that experience to mm. inform us of how to do the others. Because it was a mixture of survey and panel discussion. Mm -hmm. questions we're going to ask in the, mm -hmm. the ground rules. And we, you have online survey up there. Would you say that's data gathering? Like you could, you could maybe go live and start, start um, I think we can do a soft data. launch in the summer. Okay. We'll do a beta. Okay. And then if there's anything we need to tweak before the fall. So I think it, it sounds to me like we're doing the major launch in the fall. So where would we want to have like communication about that press release kind of thing in the fall? It's, a, it's hard to get things out in the summer, I think. It's hard to get people's attention. It's a sort of late summer. Yeah, late summer beginning, I would have thought, sort of early September. Press release, okay. Kind of would it be possible to I would, I would probably say October. Mm -hmm. the so, most so I'm going to draw. But what I was going to say was, uh, but I don't think the time it works. I think it's more fun to read about this panel happened at the high school, and now we're about to do it in these other places. Mm -hmm. 
so that it's sort of an article that talks about the experience and with a plan for the next experience. Yeah. I think we could also we could we could take some data we've gotten from the Pride Parade and the high school, put it into a press release saying these are our initial. So yeah, reporting something. Yeah. As opposed to all right. future. Right. And maybe, right. And maybe we'll have data from the um, online. Yes. The other side. Yep. Okay. That works better. Yeah. So we need to find a date, location, and um, what's what shape is it going to take? How, where is the launch? Are we going to invite people to a launch? Are we going to piggyback on an event that's happening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a big launch rather than a series of smaller ones. We start with a big one. I I think we're going to do we're going to try and do some experimenting over the summer as we can. You know, with the online. Definitely with the online survey. Um, oh, I know. We said it may be good in the summer to talk with people who are in the house who don't have houses. All oh, right, that was it. There was yeah. somebody in the summer. Yeah. Some some sort of what we were talking about. Right. So when you say big launch, are you talking about? Um, Launch article in the newspaper. Okay, but then you say location, so it's an event as well. It's my question. Okay, yeah, because I thought um, I'm having a hard time seeing how what an event would be that would draw a lot of people. Because I thought what we were trying to do was have smaller circles, more smaller circles. Well, we struggled with that because last year when we did, you know, we did ones in all the different wards and felt we didn't get enough people. Right. So then we thought we'd go to sites like right. the senior right. center or, um, but but that thing of how many small versus a fewer number of larger ones, is very hard. Mm -hmm. That might be a, a that might be a good place to promote. Commission in general, mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. knowing that we're going to be um, putting ourselves out there in these smaller ways. It would be nice to have a table and just answer general questions or just let people know that we're existing. Uh, maybe we would collect data or maybe we would just. Mm -hmm. um, you mean at an event that we wouldn't not wouldn't be like our event, it would be something we would go to? Yeah, is there a citywide event in the fall? Yeah, that's like, something like the Pride Parade. Which we didn't have time to have a, ta a table on. Yeah. It's a holiday stroll, but that's late. I was trying to think if there's something. Is there's 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 Oh yeah, that's a good because the, the three county fair is is a much bigger area, mm -hmm. but it's not just Northampton. Right. It's probably true of bit of transforms, but it's yeah. So we don't we don't have to have an event, right? Right. It can just be. need to have the schedule, our schedule of small groups. Yeah, right. So we need to work on that over the summer if we're going to publish it in the fall. Yeah, like I think we should make that firmed up by July, by our July meeting. Okay. Because you have, have to have certain information in order to write a mm -hmm. press release. Schedule it, book from places, and all that stuff. So we go 
also talked about trying to piggyback onto other events that were going on, if there were other events going on. Mm -hmm. So is there some meeting going on? So the Center for New Americans, they yeah. have, the, um, have, for the school year, they have the students in the English classes. And so that's kind of dwindling over the summer, but certainly she wants to meet and talk about scheduling something like that. It could be a real dialogue, I suppose. Yeah. We had talked about sort of piggybacking with um, Northampton Connect, but I haven't heard so North, much what's happening. Um, Northampton Connect is about to go on to a, there's going to be a meeting in about a week and a half. They're trying to do something called the Book Project along with Forbes Library. And it's sort of more people telling their own stories or offering their own books. Um, I have been involved with a lot of planning meetings I've still on the email chain. Um, and that's what they're planning. Now, it is the kind of thing that it's probably going to happen with or in partnership with Forbes. Um, so I think they're going to be doing something like that that's not human rights focused, but more still trying to improve dialogue. Um, so I don't know if that's a, a thing we can piggyback with. Um, by the way, there was also some concern of our partnering with Northampton Connects and whether that limited our efficacy. We had talked about that it was probably better to partner with other groups. And then the context for that? Is there a context to that? What was the limiting factors? Uh, uh, Northampton Connect sort of grew earlier mm -hmm. on when there was concerns about dialogue between um, things, issues in downtown. Everything from surveillance cameras to benches to uh, uh, people who are asking for money on the streets and sort of setting up dialogues about that. And that's been perceived either correctly or incorrectly as, well, this is a pro-business group um, that's looking for ways to change the, okay. the yeah. and so. So there's an issue with, per, if you partner, are you saying you're on this side or the other side? Thank you. It's very Northampton. I should say a bias. comment on that, but it is. <laughs> I, I think it could be more general than that. Yeah. yeah. I think it probably happens now. Um, I'm wondering about maybe reaching out in the summer to the Forbes and Lily libraries just to kind of like grease the wheels there and you know, see if they'll be partners with us, putting a survey there. And, uh, okay. Because they have had these other events. I don't know what if they're, if there's, last year they had these grants for um, book discussions that were about race um, and about other issues. I don't know if that's going on this year again or not. But those are events that they would like if we were in the room. So did we make a decision about how many listening circles uh, we think we should have? And is that a decision? We, we uh, identified the areas that we were want that we want to prioritize, but not numbers. Yeah. I think a few of us decided we're going to. I think we are also in contact by IOI, yeah. contact CNA, um, that's the Pioneer Valley Workers Association. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anyone's been tasked with um, the Shelter Library. With the libraries? Yeah, the libraries. No, um, not yet. Um, the housing units we talked about, what we do. Um, right, to identify an event or a time. 
proceed. Right. Okay. Right. So, like, have it at one one of the public housing units. Um, so I think one I of the Northampton Housing Authority places. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably, um, I'll, I'll try and contact their board. Um, in the six minutes we have left, um, can are there any places here where folks feel like they can take ownership and move this the next step forward? I'll do the libraries. We also want to add the senior center to oh, the yes. that, that was yeah. um, for the fall, I think. It seems like it, yeah. I think, I think. We did do one of our listening centers. Yes, one of well, the yeah. ward meetings. We had it there. Two meetings there. Two, yeah. But that was because that was a great venue. Yes. Not, like, not because we're trying to get that population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I think if there's any events in the summer, we could seize the opportunity for it. Um, that would be good. There's a naturalization ceremony. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that too. General public should be as well. Oh, it's so great. Um, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering how we're going to get this houseless population. Um, I'm going to talk to um, Peg. Peg oh, Miller. okay. Yeah. Because I was going to suggest, like, the Northampton Recovery Center has a lot of people who go there who are um, living in, in um, Grove Street or right. the Cot Shelter. Right. So that might be a place. Yeah, they're about to. Uh, Peg's about to put out her opinion laying working group uh, report. Oh boy, sounds really interesting. So, um, I wonder how they keep going. Yeah, so we should. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, are you taking ownership of the survey? Yeah. So um, I actually just finished inputting all this data right here. <laughs> right okay. there. Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm going to yeah. share with everybody uh, the both the amended survey that I'm working on right now that needs a little bit of tweaking. You can you can review all the data from the Pride Parade right here. Um, Neural probably has a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really interesting. I'm actually really um, optimistic about uh, things. I think Pride kind of brings out the best of people. Yeah. Um, but um, right. there was there was a, there was a few kind of disheartening things, but most often. Very, very positive. You're the opposite of a procrastinator. <laughs> <laughs> I would stare at that pile for a week. So, so in addition to, to, can you put the Human Rights Commission logo and the seal of the city on, if I could send those to you? Yes. On the paper version? And yes. also for the online version. Um, and are you willing to set up the online version, survey monthly Google form, whatever? Oh, yeah. Whatever you Yep, the Google form is essentially done. Awesome. Okay. Great. Anybody want to put their names by anything else? Um, senior Center. Neural went to the, no, that was the Commission on Disabilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Megan went to one too, right? Oh. But no, they, oh. they canceled that. Oh, okay. It was disabilities, not not necessarily. Oh, right, right, right. right. Okay. Look, maybe we can get to a summer meeting with them. I'll reach out to the senior center director to see about what time what time of year might be good to have a circle at the senior center. 
we agreed yeah, that, that we, would agree. we want to do it there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. And can we leave, um, or do we even want to leave surveys there? Oh, yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. idea. Just mm -hmm. because there's a nice yeah. energy. And you're going to keep following us. Keep following us. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow up with Um, can I just say something about what I think would be good for our planning purposes? It would be like in our June meeting to try to map out the mm -hmm. listening circles, maybe approximately when we want them. And because it takes a little bit of time yeah. to kind of secure locations and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, locations and What? So I then think we're close to that. Then at that meeting, we can um, we can all take on you know finding locations for them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was thinking about the naturalization ceremony. I did it a long time ago, but I didn't I didn't remember there being any kind of um, place for anybody for other groups. There's a table there, but uh, the League of Women Voters has a table there. Oh, really? To catch them right up and get them to sign up. The, the thing about that event is that I, I've been there, I've been to it m many times, and um, it draws people from all over the state. Yeah. So, like, most of the people that are going to naturalize are not from Northampton and, and don't even spend time here because they're just coming here for that event. So, that's just something. Although it does draw people from Northampton because it's just such a cool thing to watch. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to do it, but I think another event that goes on on an ongoing way that brings a lot of people is the Founders Market on Tuesday mm -hmm. afternoon and Saturday morning. I know, I was just going to say that. And so having a booth there, I think, would be might be. I have no idea, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> um, I love the farmers market. Uh, no, so do I. I, I. You don't want to. You want to be able to get your vegetables. <laughs> vegetables and shoes and collect the rest of the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think how you see this to get a table there. I think it's something. Well, I think if you're real, you're they have to they pay. But I'm wondering if you sort of set up next to the um, snap table or something and say we're doing this. Something mm -hmm. It seems like I always yeah. see like tables on Main Street next to the yes. farmer's market. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. People yeah. seeing signatures and that yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've done this for another city connected group and it was easy to get a permit from the police and the DPW to do it on Main Street next to the farmer's oh, market. Okay. But, but no. the farmers, right, but, but on the corner. The, yeah. the Tuesday market? Pretty big restrictions. Forget it. I, yeah. I mean, you, you might be able to, but this was it's a so city related thing, and we, uh, we we did eventually get a table, but it wasn't, it wasn't easy. We had to, but the one that really was impossible was the Wednesday market at Lawrence. In Florence. Uh, really in Florence. Didn't happen. They, they wouldn't allow it yeah. because the city didn't have a say in it somehow. Right. You were asking the farmers market the organizers. We, yeah, we asked the library. We asked the police. We asked the highway. We asked the mm -hmm. the farmers market, and the answer uh, really was no. But it was really easy to get one at the Saturday market. That you, you know, you have to get your paper signed, but it was simple. All right. I H R D. Oh, oh, the International Human Rights. Right. Okay. Oh, the 10th of December. Well, it is the 10th of December. Pardon? The 10th of December. Yeah. That's. Uh, so, and, so we'll have to decide what we would want to come in out this year. Yeah. And that is near the holidays. We'll make sure it's not the it same is. time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe we can bother. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have some things we're moving forward for June. Um, come back with your reports. I'll get you the minutes quicker, quicker than usual. 
And I'm going to find our list that of uh, the circles we identified because I know we have it in one of the agendas. And I yeah. just uh, I'd like to look at it again, make sure we're covering everything. Yeah, we'll thank you. Um, if you want, if you yeah. send that list to Lori, she'll put it on the agenda. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, great. Mm. Oh, oh okay. great. It Thanks. is seven oh four, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Send so me. Second. Second. All in favor. Bye. Bye.